Hey there, welcome. Just so you know, this is just the painting of this prop and hopefully advice for similar props. If you want to see the foam work, which we did using only a knife, glue and foam, go check out the previous video. Thanks. For this part of the build, we used various acrylic paints with paintbrushes, spot of water, some washing up liquid, some liquid latex, and some window washing solution. Also, as a bonus, it'll help you out to get some acrylic inks and maybe even some spray on clear plaster dip. Hey girls, guys, and everyone else, welcome back. I'm Hayes, this is Armored Brownies, and we are carrying on with our Doran Shield build. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out and hopefully you can use this tutorial to make either a shield just like this or anything you want using these sort of techniques because they'll apply to anything and you can make something you are just as happy with. If you of course do end up uh, using any of these techniques here, please share them with me in the Discord server, links in the description below, our Facebook page, in the comments below, whatever. I want to see them, I want to know that, I want to know if I've helped you at all, it would be great. Um, so hopefully this will in. <laughs> Why would you send the cat in here? <laughs> um. So someone wants attention, and I know you were in the first video we did. So you probably this probably isn't even worth it. It's probably not worth extra extra views, is it? Anyway, this is Spooky, and he's going away now. Of course, if you are an experienced cosplayer, then you might find a lot of this a bit too basic. But you also might be able to watch it and pick up one or two little small tricks. They might help you out. Or if not, you can just watch it for validation, knowing you knew everything we were doing here and makes yourself feel good. Anyway, where were we with this? So we do start with a follower, apparently, which is a good reminder that you should definitely be following me on twitch.tv if you enjoy this. Uh, because it will mean you get to see whatever I build next live and pick up any tricks you can. Although what I might do is upload the full Doran's Items builds streams just so you guys can watch them on YouTube. But that is quite a lot of content so we'll see what happens. We are preparing to paint our foam because this is the foam, this is where we got to last time and the first thing we actually need to do is pour out a little bit of liquid latex. This is standard liquid latex you can get at most art stores. I buy it in quite large quantities because I use it for a vast number of things and this will be our flexible medium that we're going to be mixing in with our acrylic paint. Of course you can use any sort of flexible medium or that acrylic paints are soluble in and is flexible will work as a base. You can definitely use your favorite type of flexible paint, but just to keep this completely simple, I wanted to use generic liquid latex. And a little thing on the side for your just peace of mind is to add a little bit of soap, well, dish soap, very liquid sort of stuff, to the to the water you're going to be cleaning your brush in because even the little bit of liquid latex in with the paint can dry on your brush and gunk it up and completely ruin your brush even halfway through using it even though it is actually a water-based liquid it, it's weird it's just those little things that will make your life a little bit easier and now we get to the actual painting part of the painting you can see we're using a mixture of um, high quality acrylic paints and quite low quality quality acrylic paints you can use whatever acrylic paint you can get you can get hold of. I buy these big tubs of quite fancy stuff because I get through quite a bit of it. You can buy the little things that are just a pound. They will do you just fine. We're starting off with quite a dark brown and we're lightening it by adding a lighter brown rather than adding white because adding white or black to darken or lighten a colour can distort the colour a bit and it's better to use lighter tone of that colour or a, or a lighter colour in general. And then we're adding a little bit of the water with its dish soap added in as a bit of a flow aid. And then just a couple of brushfuls, I think brushfuls is a good way of putting it, of um, latex. It's probably, what, 25%, maybe 20% of the acrylic paint worth. It's important that we've mixed up the acrylic before adding the latex because the latex itself is white but dries clear. But when you add the latex, it will lighten what you're adding it to, but when it dries, it'll darken. So you've got to be a little bit worried about that. And then as we go, we're just adding, we're just adding little bits of water and little bits of latex to our paint to make it flow nicely as we fill in all of the details that we've put in on this, put on this foam. 
It's important to note that this first layer of paint we're putting down is a base coat, a big chunky block color. It's not the final color that this thing's going to be because we're going to end up shading and highlighting it. And also, depending on the acrylics you're using, you might need to put multiple layers down of your base coat to get a nice, deep and opaque color. And we do this until, until we're done. And we have all of the wooden parts, including the bits between the metal banding painted and the bits inside all the cuts we put around the edges of the banding. And then you've got also got to be very careful to go around all the edges where the different parts join and there's different like there's different raised surfaces because the bright color of the purple underneath or if you're using white foam or if you're using black foam it'll stand out against the brown wood for the banding it's very very much the same sort of thing you can tell using the little little one pound pot of paint it's just standard acrylic paint and we are adding a little bit of black to deepen the color because silver is not a very strong color I want to say. The pigments are always a little bit translucent so adding a bit of black deepens the color in the same way that adding a bit of white can deepen a yellow and make it less translucent because white has to be a very strong pigment in a way that yellow isn't. And I know I said earlier, don't add white or black to your pigments to change the color. This isn't so much for cha changing the color. This is more for making a very solid base coat because despite us using our silver paint here, this isn't the silver or metallic color we're going for. This is more of a gray color we're adding here. Sometimes it's a little hard to explain the sometimes a little hard to explain some of the more intricacies, some of the more weird things and weird parts about using like acrylic paints mixing paints together for prop painting you will get a good feel for paints after using them enough but hopefully if you've ever found yourself struggling with certain paints and you're watching this now and thinking oh my paints came out really thin what what could I have done about it it could just be because the paints you're using had had despite looking opaque had quite a low pigment amount in them and you can augment that with black or white or a more expensive paint and hopefully this will give you a boost on getting to know your paints and then we just go over all of the white bits here and uh, all of the white bits here that want to eventually be metallic with our with our silver gray mixture and once you have followed along you should get something base coated just like this the brown of the wood effect actually looks like it's got multiple colors on it right now because that's where the latex has dried where the latex has dried a bit you can see the brown is actually darker and that's and that's going to even out as it dries but you can see just what a difference the addition of the latex adds to the color so now just like the drawing ring from last episode we hang it up to dry and I would advise leaving this to dry overnight or over a radiator or if it's a nice sunny day outside you can leave it to dry in direct sunlight. Unfortunately, Storm Kira is battering the length and breadth of the UK causing widespread travel disruption. Winds of up to 90... <laughs> yeah, that is how the weather has been and it's been terrible but that's fine sometimes depending on if you're using different chemicals and such you'll find that different humidities will affect what you're working with but that shouldn't affect anything here but i just thought i'd use this moment whilst we're waiting overnight for the first base coat of this thing to dry to let you know that all of this was done live on stream on twitch.tv forward slash armored brownies if you go there you can see what we make next and it'll either be some stuff I'm doing for myself, some commission work because I do a fair bit of uh, paid work for other people or I will actually be working on the next League of Legends items and if there's any League of Legends items you want to see made or if you have any ideas for good and interesting ways to make some of the items for the item shop please let me know. Anyway, should go back. Now that it's dry we can get on to actually giving it a nice and healthy paint job because all of this is just, as I've said three or four times now, our base coat. So mixing up a bit like before, but we need less latex than before because we've already got the base coat, which this will, the, the next layer of paint will stick to quite nicely. We want a brighter silver. So 
Here, we're not actually mixing any of the black in like we did before, and we're just going over all the flat surfaces with the bright silver. And we're gonna go around all the, all the edges that we want to be a brighter silver, and you can already see how much that's bringing it out. This isn't like highlighting and shading where the base coat is actually visible. No, this is the base coat as a good canvas for the color we want to put on above it. In the same way that if you're painting something yellow, you will usually want to paint it white beforehand and then do 50-50 yellow to white and then 100% yellow. And we've just gone around the edge to do that. Let that dry. And now we're doing some shading. So. The spray bottle you see me emptying here, rather than mixing up a fresh batch on stream to show you guys what I actually did, is a mixture of acrylic paint or acrylic ink plus window washing liquid. The no streaks sort of stuff and also some dishwashing liquid, like fairy liquid, all mixed together with a bit of water and that means that it has no surface tension so it won't pool up on flat surfaces and will settle into deep recesses and it's a homemade ink. Anyone can make them, you can buy them. In fact, if you've ever painted Wahama miniatures, you'll be very familiar with Nung oil, liquid skill in a can, but this stuff is, this stuff is used on much bigger scale props because you can make up a load of it yourself and here you can see I use both a sponge or effectively a wad of tissues as a sponge and then and also a paintbrush to go over all of the flat surface and then I use some more tissues to just anywhere where it's pulled on the flat surfaces just brush it off the raised areas and then we let that dry it doesn't have to dry thoroughly but we want it to be pretty dry before we start to put our highlights on so here we're using a much much lighter brown you can see and we're going to go over all of the leading edges these are edges where there is some weathering where there are two materials joining anywhere that you would expect the wood to be a little bit lighter but also as we're going we're not afraid to smudge it and blend it in a little bit with the not so much damp but definitely not 100 dry ink that we just put on which will allow, which will make it blend in a lot better but we've also got to remember the art style of the piece that we've act, that we're actually copying it's got a very to steal to steal a term that i've only heard used in minecraft a painterly style it's, it's very cartoonish where as i said as i said in the last video we're just trying to evoke the idea you can tell the artist isn't drawing a real object they're drawing a very cartoony interpretation of an object and we want to and we just want to evoke that as well so we're going over the edges around around the knots anywhere that we want a highlight to go and then smudging in some bits we want to go we want to put a little highlight following the textures we put in the center but try to be a little sparser with those and then blend them in with your finger until you get something that looks just like this and we're pretty happy with that so far and then and then we need to do something very similar for our metal although it's already a metallic pigment we still want to highlight it and we do that with a lighter pigment and we're just going to apply significantly less than we did for the wood but also following the leading edges where they're, we're putting a brighter silver. In fact, this one actually has some white mixed in with it. If you have a really brilliant silver, you can mix that in with your base silver, but doing a little bit of white gives an almost fake metallic effect because you've got to think about how metal shines in cartoons. They tend to be jagged, sharp, reflections and catching of the light so we're using a flat brush and we're kind of brushing it across the corners to catch the edges and we're doing that all the way around the edge and in all of the raw edges of metal that would be left by the battle damage that we've put in as well because the battle damage although you might want to weather around the where the battle damage is like put put fading put a bit of dirt around there the metal itself will be will be will have been rubbed raw and also all of the edges, all of the leading edges of the piece would have been rubbed raw where the metal has been either stored, hit, bashed, whatever. And then there's one little thing that I wanted to do to make the whole piece pop. 
that was added a little bit a little bit of our ink just around each individual one of our rivets just so they look a lot more 3D. I know they are 3D but since they're all painted in the same colour it's not as obvious as you'd like so just putting a little bit of ink around there helps make them stand out. Of course if you have a definitive way up or down that you're going to be holding this you could also trickle some of the ink down from the rivets so it looks like there's a little bit of rust or corrosion dripping off them giving a much more aged look to this but but since this is an ambidextrous prop i kind of don't want to do this and then there is our little bonus round this is totally not necessary for a good survivable prop but it's something i like to do for all of my props and especially since this is one that i want to last so i can bring it to conventions and you guys can hold it along with your cosplay costumes and then go oh this is what jinx would look like holding all of these doran's items how does she hold all these swords or something like that i seal it with this plaster dip spray it's just a clear vinyl spray that i put over the top and since it's flexible it basically just creates a nice varnished layer over the top of it as you can see it makes very little visual difference but it just makes it a little bit tougher but of course you don't have to do it this is just one of those extra things that i don't want you to feel obliged to purchase because i don't want you to feel like there's another barrier to entry with making props anyway th there's our finished shield if you've been following along, making your own shield, making your own prop, hopefully this has inspired you to have had, have done it or maybe try something yourself in the future. If you have any questions about any part of this, please just let me know. I love answering questions. I've been doing this for years. I've worked with all sorts of materials. I do this professionally. I do this for companies, workshop studios. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And, and I'll see you again next time for the Doran's Blades. Thanks for joining me and goodbye.